Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Well, good to know you're there. I don't really see you. But anyway, today I'm going to paint a walk in the woods. And there's the painting. And as you can tell, it's um, a study, if you will, of light and dark and light seeming to be coming from the distance. But of course, the truth is it's the dark in the foreground that makes it look that way. So I'll show you how I did that right now. Okay, let's get started with this one. This is a pretty straightforward one. I have to make sure to remember to keep the, the opening where the light is very light. And then everything else pretty much very dark. But we can always change it from light to dark. You can't change from dark to light. Well, you can, but it's, it's always a risk. So how are you guys doing? So it's been raining here in Florida. Yesterday it rained and this morning it rained, but right now it's pretty nice out there. And uh, so Robin and I went to her mom's yesterday. Robin's mom is 91 and they were making plans for what to do on Easter. And of course, I just kind of sat there. <laughs> I'm, I'm good with not being involved in the planning things. And uh, it sounds like we're going to have a nice Easter. Looking forward to it. I'm going to try to do something a little different here. I'm going to add some purple instead of the normal colors that you might see. I just think it'd be cool to have some kind of a violet color happening in the background. Maybe it's because I'm thinking of Easter. Isn't purple associated with Easter? I think it is. So trying to keep it all very light. All very watered down. You know, I was looking at some other videos from our other artists who work with watercolor, and what's really amazing is how different one artist is from another. I'm I'm sure I'm talking to you, and you're thinking the same thing about your own art. You probably have a style that is yours. And uh, you have a way of doing your art that is yours. And I think that's why I wanted to try to go into the purple rather than the yellow and green with this particular picture. Although I know myself, I'm pretty much a sucker for the, the tried and true. Um, but maybe I'll just veer, veer into the the odd just a little bit yeah. yeah so even though that's the darker part right now because it's got all the purple in it it's gonna be the lighter part part when I'm done just keep it kind of very hazy like that so yesterday I was telling you I went to uh, Robin's mom with Robin and um, Basically, I was watching game shows on TV. <laughs> and uh, they were making plans. But anyway, we left pretty late. It was like 10 o'clock when we got out of there. And so it's about a 15 minute drive, 15 mile drive to, uh, to, to get home from there. And guess what happened? I needed gasoline, of course. And guess what happened when I needed gasoline? I pulled into the gas station. And guess what happened when I pulled into the gas station? I heard my tire leaking. I had a, a flat happening. It wasn't flat, but it was going flat. And I could hear it. And I thought, oh no, a flat. It's raining. And I have a flat. So I tried filling it up, thinking that if I filled it up just a little bit, 
that um, it could last until I got home because at that point I was only like eight miles from home and uh, uh, but the tire was just just not taking air it was just leaking the air was coming out as quickly as I was putting it in so the next best thing was to put the spare on so I found a place in the parking lot of the convenience store and I um, put the spare on the spare is a donut it's not a real size tire and this morning when I looked to see what caused the flat it was a piece of glass brown glass like from a beer bottle I'm, I'm gonna say and uh, I don't know if it can be fixed it was kind of close to the sidewall but it wasn't in the sidewall so I always heard that you can't fix it if it's in the sidewall so we'll see I'll take it to the tire guy and then they will know they are the ones who know that kind of stuff so the tree in this picture by the way is such an interesting tree it's got so many different things happening I'm just kind of messing with this a little bit now You know, you have to count your blessings. I the, the tire went out in a safe place, a well-lit place. You know, if, if I didn't, I mean, I don't even know where I picked up the piece of glass that caused it to go flat. But regardless, I was in a safe place. You just never know. I, I've, I've said this before that when I've had incidents on the highway, with tires and everything or anything that went wrong with that I'm always really blessed to have the the circumstances as good as they could be I I've had times where my car broke down in my own driveway so there, there's an example right there and uh, just grateful that I was able to fix it last night. I have a little story to tell you about a co my car having a, a flat once before, years and years and years ago. So just a little background on what I was doing at that point in my life. It was probably in the mid 80s, which means I was in my 30s, my early 30s. And I, I was a musician and I was playing um, by my playing solo at colleges and I was driving from one college to the next that was kind of what I did and I got loads of stories from those years <laughs> but I just want to tell you one of them so I was playing um, a college in Miami I think it was St. Thomas University does that sound right and it was the middle of the night, it was very late at night, and I was on, I think I was on the Florida Turnpike, or maybe I-95, I possibly. I'm not really sure anymore, but it was a long time ago. But anyway, I had a flat. And down in Miami, there are a lot of um, canals. And so there was a canal coming up, and I had the flat. I don't think it was completely fat, flat. I think I felt it was going flat. And um, so I saw the canal coming up. And now the, the canal, of course, has a an overpass, a, a bridge, a small little bridge that goes over the canal. And the, the overpass is, is um, uh, it has, oh, what do you want to say, uh, guardrails, you know, so you don't run off the bridge. And so I pulled 
I, was, I could have pulled before the bridge, but I, for some reason, decided to pull after the bridge. It's, it's an important part of the story. So, <clears throat> I get out of my car. I had a hatch, a hatchback at that time. I can't remember what kind of car I had. But anyway, I, the, for whatever reason, the, the 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 device that holds the the spare tire in place was not moving. It's like the the little screw that holds it in was stripped, and so. I couldn't get it out, I couldn't get it out, I couldn't get it out. Then I heard a crash. A car crashed. And it crashed into the guardrail on the, uh, oh, over the, the canal. And it was bad enough crash that the car was smoking, but not bad enough that anybody seemed to be hurt. And uh, the people got out of the car now they're walking on the turnpike. I mean, this is a busy road. At this particular exact moment, it wasn't busy. Thank goodness, because they would have got hit. And I figured they were shaken up, were shooken up, whatever you say, and that they were disoriented, you know, from the crash. And, and gosh, almost like right away, another vehicle, a van, stops and picks them up. And they all leave. Now there's a car sitting on the other side of the canal with steam coming out of it. I could say smoke. I'm not sure if it was smoke. I think it was steam. And, and there I was in the middle of the night. Well, somebody must have called a tow truck because the tow truck showed up. So I said to the guy in the tow truck, can I borrow a tool? I can't get my spare tire out. He would not lend me a tool. I don't blame him. Lending tools is not a good idea because they, they never come back. I would have given it back, but he didn't know me, and I guess I don't blame him for that. So uh, he gave me a pipe, like a lead pipe, and with that lead pipe, I was able to break free the um, the piece that was hold holding in the the um, spare tire I was able to break it and then I was able to put my spare tire on now going back to the music the job I had my job was to play music in colleges and you know at this point I was playing my own songs some but mostly I was playing like popular songs like hits of the day like Billy Joel and and Beatles and who knows what else? Just, just you know, popular songs. Um, so after that happened, I'm driving in my car back to Ocala. It's about a 300-mile drive. And I have a lot of time to think. And I have a lot of time to pray. And I'm praying to God, thanking God that I didn't get hurt. Because that car easily... If I had stopped at the other side of that that little bridge that car could have hit me that would have been the end of me um, so I was thanking God that I was okay thanking God that I was able to get my spare on and just, just thanking and thanking and thanking and then it occurred to me that maybe I should change what I'm doing maybe I should do Christian music or worship music or whatever you want to call it Um, so I made my mind up on the drive home that I would do that I would, I would ch change everything I would start promoting myself as, a, as a, a church act and not a college act and th that meant I wouldn't be asking for a dollar amount I'd be asking for a love offering it's a risky it's a risky thing you know you know you don't know if, if you're going to get the money to, to survive. But then, you know, that's the whole point, is you put your faith in God, and that's the whole point of it all, right? To, to have faith. You're, you're trying to teach people or encourage people with music or whatever to have faith, and then here you are 
worrying about. So I thought, well, okay, don't worry about it. Just do it, and we'll see what happens. Well, I did this for quite a while. I played churches. I, I wrote some um, Christian songs, and I, um, I played a lot of churches, too. And, you know, all the churches were different. Some of them had, like, these rules, and they, they wanted to know in advance what they needed to know about me, cause, and I don't blame them. You know, they needed to know that stuff. Um, but the one thing is, they kept calling me a minister. And I just thought, I'm not good enough to be called a minister. Because, you know what, I, I, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but I smoked cigars. I still smoke cigars. Sometimes, not too much. In fact, I haven't had one in a long time. But the point is... I did, and I thought, well, these kids, because I was 30-something, and the people I was playing for, let's face it, they were young, they were, they were kids, okay, they weren't all kids, I mean, there were some older people in the audiences, but they were mostly kids, and I thought, well, I don't want them to be looking up, looking up to me as some kind of a minister, some kind of a person who's figured out his life and some kind of a person who's the role model for anybody and I thought just I'll keep doing the songs but I don't know if I can it's like it was like an imposter you know the, the people will say imposter syndrome well that's what it was I was having the imposter syndrome I thought well I'm not that good I'm not that good so I went back to playing colleges, and then eventually, I, uh, it was 1984 or so, I got a, um, an opportunity to work in a radio station, just part-time. So I'd be working in the radio station, and I'd be um, playing colleges, and... Uh, that was kind of what I did the, the last part of the 80s. Anyway, so so there's this little story about a flat tire I had once upon a time. <laughs> did that make sense? <laughs> uh, I kind of ramble when I do these paintings, don't I? Wow, I was looking at this uh, Facebook posting. There's a group in town, and they get together all the time, and they they work on art together. Isn't that nice? Yeah, they're a lot younger than me, so I probably wouldn't fit in, but it's a very nice thing. Sometimes I do. Um, I've, I've sat with people and painted. It's kind of nice. Let me make sure I keep this little bit of a dappled light look over here. The whole idea is to keep that lit and everything else pretty dark. And over here is lit too. I know you know that already. turning out to be a nice day. So I gotta get my tire fixed now. Or I have to buy a new one. Which is a pain. But that's the way the world is, right? Hey, it could, things could be worse. Things. Look at the news. Look at all the people having such horrible, horrible things happening in the news. That poor story from Baltimore with that bridge. That's just unbelievable. You know, I'm glad with that story that the uh, the Mayday call was able to make it to the to the authorities who could get the cars off the bridge. I know they didn't get all of them, but apparently they got a lot of them off the bridge. So it's 
See, I am using green. I, I knew I would. I knew I wasn't going to make this really wild colors. I'm too much of a traditionalist, I guess. Just keeping this part light here so I can create a little bit of depth to, to the way it looks. I like the way this brush, it's a, it's a raggedy edge brush. I like the way it puts down paint, like when I'm just dabbing it on here, like, like pointillism. Have you ever done pointillism with ink? If you have, you know, that's a tedious, tedious task also, but it's very rewarding, right? It's very rewarding. Also, another thing that I like to do is I like to put a complementary color in the background. I kind of learned that from James Gurney and some of the other artists that I've watched on, on YouTube. I don't know James Gurney personally, but I admire him greatly. He's unbelievable. So very good. If you don't know who I mean, just look him up. G-U-R-N-E-Y. He's unbelievable. He's so very, very good. And he works, well, on his YouTube channel anyway, he works mostly with gouache. And, you know, he was uh, good pals with Thomas Kincaid. You might know Thomas Kincaid. It's the guy who was the painter of light, they called him. I don't know if he called himself that, or if that's a moniker somebody else gave him. But, but anyway, they were good friends. I guess they worked... I think they worked in a studio together. I can't remember what the story was there. So, trying to get this one to make sure the sunlight comes through here. Yeah, we got some interesting trees here in Florida. All different kinds of trees, especially here in the central, north central part of the state. I guess we're kind of at that point where the, the vegetation changes. So just go a little bit to the north and you see one kind of a tree all the time. And then a little bit to the south and you see these other, other trees like this one right here. If you go to St. Pete, St. Petersburg, um, you'll find these very interesting trees that grow down there. I can't remember what they're called. But they are, I've seen them in movies that, <laughs> like I see them being featured in movies. They look like good hiding places for the wildlife. They're right there. Uh, where did I see them? I think I saw them in St. Petersburg, right near the St. Petersburg Pier. If you're familiar with where the Tampa Devil Rays, is that the Tampa Devil, the Tampa Rays, the baseball team, if you're familiar with the stadium they play in, which is called Tropicana Field, it's right there. There's a park real close to there. And that's what I'm talking about right there. I 
think one of the secrets to making it look multi-layered here is to keep some of it watered down. to keep that lit right there that's it so can you believe it's already what is it March 28th wow uh, when I was a kid Easter was always a big deal you got the, the Easter candy the Easter egg hunt um, uh, we, my, my dad and mom would take us out to have pancakes. I, I don't know how that happened, what the tradition was, but yeah, we always would go out for pancakes, like an IHOP or something like that. It was always fun. Got some fond memories. I found, I, after my mom and dad died, I found in their house some of the photographs that, I mean, was, for, up until I found the photographs, I didn't know they were there, I guess, or I forgot about them. And so a lot of that stuff was just in my memory. It's nice to find it, you know. I often wonder, what's going to happen with the kids today? It was some of the, the old pictures are in, uh, on digital. Are they going to be able to? share them? Are they going to be able to find them? Like, I wonder. Maybe they'll, they'll think about printing them. It's a little bit too green right there. So except for the tree, I don't really have much vertical stuff happening. So I'll have to fix that. Right now I just want to get this sense. This tree has like vines all over it. So I want to make sure I get that, that look of the vines. Just, a, just takes a couple of layers to really make the darks dark. some more vertical lines. Take some liberties with the composition here. working this over here.
can hear that crow. You can hear that crow. I used to feed the squirrels outside. Oh. Oh, sorry. I had to adjust my legs. I used to feed the, um, not the squirrels. I did feed the squirrels. I used to feed the, the birds. And so to stop the squirrels from eating the bird food, I would try to feed the squirrels. So I got these peanuts, these raw peanuts. Not salted, not, not, uh, what do they do to peanuts? Bake them. But anyway, they were just raw, whole peanuts. And I would put them on the ground for the squirrels. Well, guess who liked them? The crows loved them. And <laughs> they, they, it was amazing to watch them because they would take several of them and put them in their mouth at one time, like, like they'd push them down their throat. And, uh, and then they would carry them places. I don't know where they carried them to. They'd fly away with them, maybe to their nest or something. But yeah, they were pretty incredible. so far. It seems to be working. But I'm going to have to use that little brush to make some vines and stuff in the background. Some of it I have to wait for it to dry. It's kind of hard to put a second layer when the first layer is not dry yet. for it to dry. Okay, so now we have that light looking stuff here. Now let me use that smaller brush. This little, little blue handle brush. It's got a very fine tip. Create some vertical lines in here. I want something like reddish. Like that, I guess. Let's just see if that works. Too red, I think. Yeah, it works, I guess. Some of these could have. Some offshoots here.
Kind of looks good with that little bit of red mixed in with that dark. You can see a little bit of the vertical lines in this bush also. together.
whole idea here was to have that, that opening right there for the light to come through. And of course, the trick to making it look like light's coming through is to make dark, right? Okay, I think I'm almost done. I think I just want to add a little bit of yellow, or maybe maybe like a pink or something. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of that pink, just to the floor of the of the path here. Just just give it a little bit of color. accentuates what's happening over there. Well, that's a happy accident, if you ask me, because I didn't know that was going to look like that. But that does look good. Thank you, Bob Ross, for the, for the term happy accident. scene done. Here we go. Let it dry now. I'll fold it up. Oh, I gotta take care of the back of the card. It looks a mess. See? I like to spread that out a little bit. Just to give it some character. It doesn't really mean anything. I just spread it out, almost erasing it. Yeah, now we can let that dry. All right, I think I like that. The path in the woods. Just adding a little, little splotches of green. Right there. All right, kids. I'm going to let it dry. And uh, I'll talk to you later. Bye.